So, um, Jamie, you use this term often in your book. Um, you, you say that we are liturgical animals mm. and that we're really shaped by um, these practices. Our desires are shaped by these practices. Yeah. Um, I'm really interested in just with the age and stage kind of of adolescence, what does that, what's, what's distinct about adolescence being liturgical animals? Yeah, so um, when, when I say human beings are liturgical animals, I'm actually sort of riff, I'm a philosopher by training, and so I'm riffing on, philosophers always say we're rational animals. Mm -hmm. And I think that doesn't adequately get at the fact that um, as we, we've discussed this, that our hearts are sort of trained to love certain things as ultimate, and that's what we're calling liturgies. Mm -hmm. well, by the way, another way to say that is, uh, to be human is to be the kind of creature who is animated by a story. Mm -hmm. so, so in a way to say that we are liturgical animals is also to say we are narrative animals. Mm -hmm. And liturgies in a way are like enacted narratives. Mm -hmm. So if I then think about what's unique about adolescence, um, f first of all, I guess before that, I think children are absolutely ritual animals. Mm -hmm. like, like in our house, if you do anything twice, it's a tradition, right? <laughs> like the, it becomes this sort of uh, um, ritual that, that children crave. And I actually think we do a disservice to adolescents when we imagine that now they just want like content or events and entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I actually think all human beings are liturgical animals and I think that what's going on in adolescence is it's actually such a, a fraught time because you, what's happening is you are emerging into the competitive space of rival yeah. liturgies much more significantly, right? And, and so what's happening is um, you might not even realize the extent to which you are sort of participating in these different kinds of liturgies. And uh, um, it seems to me that one of the gifts we can give young people is first of all, help them to see that. To mm -hmm. rec I, I think one of the crucial things about adolescence is now they are, are um, self-conscious enough to be able to take ownership of those kinds of things and recognize it. And, and we do really do a disservice when we undersell how smart they are, mm -hmm. right? But I think, um, I also think there are, there's a deeply communal aspect to liturgy, right? To, to liturgies and that's where Young people, I think, just crave that sort of communal social dynamic, which is why loneliness is so, so painful. And uh, it, it seems to me that embracing the communal aspect of liturgical formation is, is a way of speaking to what is such an intense hunger in adolescence at a really, really crucial phase of, of their lives. I, I would say, if I can add one more thing too, though, I, I also think it's really beautiful and powerful when young people have the opportunity to participate in these liturgies mm -hmm. across generations, and they, they see people older than them, beyond them, who've walked through th what they have, have suffered through, uh, and still participating and there and interested. I, I think that sort of multi-generational opportunities for uh, um, ritual observance it's not just because we're scoring points by doing the rituals. It's like it's forming us and saying we are a people of God. Right. And I just think that's a, we shouldn't underestimate how significant that is.